speaker and Freeview Channel 726, BBC Radio Stoke. Morning, hope you're doing okay. Thanks for being there. This morning I want to tell you about Peter from Cheshire and his son Max. I went to meet them last week. He's in his early 40s and he is a very fit guy. He's been like in these Iron Man things. He's got a pilot's licence. He's got a lovely house, lives near Bunbury and is also a qualified rugby coach. But in 2017, he was diagnosed with incurable blood cancer and given seven years to live. He's looking for a donor who would be need to be the perfect match for him. And his son, Max, he's only eight, and he is here reading out some of his letter he wrote to a local magazine. My name is Max from McLeaf, and my age is eight. My dad has myeloma, which is a blood cancer that I really don't want him to have. You can help Pete, my dad, beat his blood cancer by registering to be on the stem cell donor list. To find himself a donor, he is trying to get as many donors on the list as he can, can, which I hope one day will be a match for him, but also for many, many others. Oh, bless him. That's Max reading out the letter he wrote to a local magazine. It got picked up by newspapers, shared by loads of people. They've been on BBC Breakfast. They've been on ITV News. As Max says, Peter's trying to get as many people as he can to be stem cell donors. I spoke to Peter about how he was feeling about everything. I decided to to not waste most of my time feeling negative and feeling sorry for myself. So I decided to try and make every day as, as optimistic, as positive and useful as I possibly could do. And I found out that my doctor told me there is a technology to help you in stem cell therapy, but right now we don't have a match for you, which is just, which is just, it's like dangling the carrot and then taking it away again. So there is hope there of breaking that seven year prognosis if I can find a stem cell donor match. And that to me was, that was like, right, okay. I decided to start a campaign last September called 10,000 Donors with a view to uh, rebalancing what I see as a very, very poorly represented a number of people on the stem cell donor register. Because in the UK alone, there's only 2% of the population on there. And so I need to improve my chances of survival and those of others by getting more people on that list. It's about getting all and everybody who might be interested registering on the stem cell donor register to try and up that 2% in the UK. And it's worked, has it? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. I mean, there are some incredible stories out there of patients who have lasted, you know, many, a lifetime's worth, you know what I mean? So, yeah. that, you know, maybe an extra 10, 15, 20 years. And, That's and massive when you've got children there, isn't it? I mean, it's, it's huge. It's huge. I mean, it is. It allows a child to grow up and go to, you know, go to college or, you know, get their, get their education and then move into a job. It, it allows someone in my position to see their kids grow up and leave home, things that you take for granted. Yeah, maybe get married or something. Maybe, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you really want to grow up and you're another, <laughs> you might get a mortgage as well. So, it's, you, know, you can really grow up. But all I want this technology to, to do is to be there ready and available should you need it. He's only in his early 40s, Peter McLeaf from Cheshire, talking to John about his campaign called A Thousand Donors. Alex Cupid is from Anthony Nolan, the charity that helps people find stem cell matches. Morning, Alex. Good morning. Why is it that this isn't already a, a common thing that people that people donate? Why is it not like blood donations? Sure, it's um, something which is so many people unfortunately don't know about yet and they've just not heard about the power of stem cell donation. Uh, and the fact that it really can um, save people's lives and and help cure blood cancer. Um, so that's what we, we do. We try and educate people about what antinolin is and what stem cell donation involves to try and get as many people as possible to sign up and join the register. So, yes, I'm willing to donate my stem cells if somebody needs me. OK, now John's just done this. I have a, f- a funny feeling that I've done this some years ago, but I'm not sure. So I need to go online and have a look. And how simple is it? Just take us through what you need to do to, to try okay. and donate. Yeah, so the first step really is registering to um, see if you can become a donor. And that involves going to our website, antonynolan.org. Um, if you're 16 to 13 in good health, you should be fine to join the register. And what we do is we'll send you a swab kit in the post. So you simply use um, a cheap swab to take a sample from the inside of your mouth and then post that back to us. Uh, you stay on the register until you turn 16. And if we think that you might be a match for a patient like Peter who's in need of a, a life-saving stem cell transplant, that's when we'd get in touch and ask you to, to go forward and donate your stem cells. So initially, it's, it's pretty straightforward, isn't it? You're giving sort of a bit of, of saliva. It's if you then 
do get matched up with somebody and could save someone's life, that's where it's quite a procedure then, I guess, isn't it? Yeah, so if you are found to be a match with somebody and asked to donate, um, the most common method of doing so is the fire process is kind of similar to giving blood. Um, you have a few injections just to release some extra stem cells. And then what we do is um, filter those stem cells out of your blood. So it's an outpatient procedure uh, in and out of hospital in the same day. Um, and most people find that it's a very straightforward thing for them to go and do to you know, potentially save somebody's life. Actually, that doesn't sound like very much at all, does it? To be to think that you could save someone's life. That actually, no, that isn't that bad. What are the chances, though? I mean, how many people do you think you would go through before you would find a match for Peter? So it's really difficult to say. There's lots of different factors which um, come into play when we're trying to find a match between a patient and a donor. Um, lots of things such as your age, your, your gender and ethnicity. Um, but we know that younger donors, especially young men, are more likely to be found to be a match for somebody. So that's why we're really encouraging as many young men, age 16 to 30, to come forward and join the register. Um, on average, you have about a 1 in 900 chance of going on to be a match for a patient. Um, but young men, they actually have a 1 in 200 chance. So we really need that, that group to come forward and say, I'm willing to help. OK. Why is that, by the way? Do you know why that is? Yeah, so young men are often um, more available to donate if they are found to be a match. And our research has actually shown that younger donors can provide better outcomes for patients. So okay. um, that's why we recruit 16 to 30-year-olds, um, because we know that these people are going to have the best possible um, outcome for patients. And okay. each person that signs up to register, it costs us £40 to do so. And as a charity, we want to make sure we're getting the best possible donors for, yeah. for our patients. So that's been well spent. Thanks, Alex. Alex Cooper is from the Anthony Nolan charity. So, I mean, I mean, if you look up stem cell donation online, then you can do what John's just done. He's, wait, he's awaiting his pack and literally you're giving a bit of saliva, aren't you? Giving a little bit of saliva and just waiting to see if you're a match. You could potentially save Peter in Cheshire's life as his eight-year-old son, Max, is campaigning for at the moment. They've done fantastically well. They started off aiming for a 1,000 signatures. They've now got over 20,000 signatures just because of this letter that eight-year-old Max has written. That's how many more donors they've got because of it. And they've already worked out that four or five people have been matched up. So this boy, Max, by sending this letter, has already saved four or five, potentially, lives which is incredible, trying to save his dad, Pete. It's BBC Radio Stoke, 15 minutes past eight.